This is case of the week number eight, ruptured ectopic pregnancy. I'm Dr. Dan Koval from Radiologist HQ. Let's look at the case and then I'll highlight some key points at the end. So we're looking at a transabdominal ultrasound of the pelvis here in a patient in her early 20s showing the sagittal view of the uterus. There's the urinary bladder there. And what do we see? Well, there's this heterogeneous echogenic material surrounding the uterine fundus and body. There's the uterus outline. When we move to the right and then also to the left, you can again see this heterogeneous echogenic debris. On the sagittal cine clip, we can see the uterus outlined here, and then notice how this complex fluid just completely fills the pelvis. On the transverse images, there's the uterus outlined here, and then there's this complex heterogeneous fluid. And it's actually hard to make out the uterus because it almost is isoechoic to this complex debris, but there it is there. Now, if I told you this patient presented to the emergency department with pelvic pain, there'd be two things you'd be worried about. One is a ruptured hemorrhagic cyst, because sometimes that can cause pretty significant hemoperitoneum. But the first thing you have to assume, particularly in this patient who has an elevated beta HCG around 1700, is a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. So here's a right adnexal mass, which looks a bit heterogeneous, and then when we add color Doppler, notice how there's some peripheral hyperemia. Moving to the endovaginal portion of the examination, notice how there's a trace fluid in the endocervical canal here. And then there's this hemorrhagic fluid in the cul-de-sac with some clot, and that extends up behind the uterus around the fundus and the uterine body. Notice though, there's also a normal thickness endometrial stripe. We don't see a normal intrauterine pregnancy at this stage. There's some more clot here at the right, and then also on the left aspect of the uterus. And when we move to the transverse images, we see that as well, this dependent clot with the hemorrhagic complex fluid posterior to the uterus, and around the fundus, it just really wraps around it. Now we want to look at the adnexa closely. Here we have a normal right ovary with some normal small follicles here. And there's the sagittal view of the ovary, but notice there's this heterogeneous echogenic mass adjacent to the ovary. But a key point here is that the ovary doesn't form a claw of tissue around the mass. It's adjacent to it and partially effaced by it, but it doesn't have a claw of tissue around it, which suggests that this mass is extra ovarian in origin and does have some internal vascularity, which we saw in the transabdominal images. Here's an image of that mass on sagittal imaging, heterogeneously echogenic. But again, notice how that it abuts the ovary, but we don't have a claw of tissue around the ovary. Another way to identify that this mass is separate from the ovary would be to apply pressure with the transducer tip. If the mass moves separate from the ovary, then you can confirm that it's actually separate and in the tube. Transverse view here showing the complex heterogeneous adnexal mass representing the ectopic pregnancy. Notice how it's adjacent to the uterus, and we don't always see an embryonic pole within an ectopic pregnancy, let alone a heartbeat. They often manifest as just a complex adnexal mass separate from the ovary, as in this case. Here we also have some internal vascularity within the mass. Reviewing the transverse cine clip of the right adnexa shows the right ovary here getting partially effaced by this echogenic heterogeneous ectopic pregnancy. And then there's the uterus here. So we have uterus and then ectopic pregnancy and then more laterally the ovary, which is a typical configuration for ectopic pregnancy. This patient then underwent laparoscopy, which found hemoperitoneum or blood in the pelvis, and then had a salpingectomy, which is surgical removal of the fallopian tube to treat the ectopic pregnancy. So the vast majority, nearly 97% of ectopic pregnancies occur in the fallopian tube, and that's usually in the ampullary region, followed by the isthmus and the fimbria. Other forms of ectopic pregnancy occurring in the interstitial or corneal portion of the tube, C-section scars in the cervix and even in the abdomen are much less common but can rarely occur. The risk factors include a prior ectopic pregnancy, prior surgery, particularly if it's involved in the fallopian tube, pelvic inflammatory disease because of the adhesions it can leave behind, also endometriosis can leave adhesions, and then in vitro fertilization. So Dr. Dubelay noted in an article originally published in the New England Journal of Medicine that a single measurement of HCG, regardless of its level, does not reliably distinguish between an ectopic and an intrauterine pregnancy. HCG levels with ectopic pregnancies are highly variable, and also patients who have normal intrauterine pregnancies that are multiple gestation might present with a much higher HCG level before we see identifiable intrauterine structures of pregnancy. So that's why it's important not to base treatment just on HCG. You want to take in the clinical and the imaging findings together. Tubal rupture is the main complication of ectopic pregnancy that occurs in up to 20% of patients, and also HCG levels don't really help in that regard either. If we see free fluid in the pelvis alone, that's not very specific, but if you see echogenic fluid in Morrison pouch and in the cul-de-sac in a patient who has an ectopic pregnancy, that raises concern for rupture. It's important to identify rupture because those patients may be more unstable and have lower hematocrit levels, but also it's a relative contraindication to methotrexate, which is medical therapy. Thank you for joining me for Case of the Week number 8, Ruptured Ectopic Pregnancy. You can catch these lectures each week by subscribing to our podcast, YouTube channel, or by following on social media. Until next time, remember, radiology is life.